While browsing around on eBay, I came across this interesting material, which is a heater wire, and it feels like a sort of soft, rubbery, silicony cover, and inside it's got carbon fibre strands. I'll give you a quick zoom in on that, just so you can actually see this. So you've got the sort of reddish coloured outer sleeve, you've got a bunch of very, very fine carbon fibre strands and then a sort of thread that's wrapped around them to bind them together, presumably for manufacturing, but it may also help with uh, the uh, assembly and termination of it afterwards. Termination being a bit odd, I'm not sure about this. So um, this one came from an eBay seller and is described as new 20 metre Minko 12K, 33 ohm metre carbon fibre underfloor heating warming. And the seller's name in this case was Prosperous Dash, and then it's a bit off the screen here, but Prosperous Dash Brocade. And one of the other pictures with this, well, there's a couple other pictures. One of them uh, shows 33 ohms a metre, and I have validated it is 33 ohms a metre, and it says 12K Japan Carbon Fibre. It turns out that Japan's one of the biggest manufacturers of carbon fibre in the world. And the 12K, I think, may actually relate to the number of strands. It really is super fine, and this actually could pose... Uh, a health risk in terms of breathing strands like that, fibres like that in. Because uh, in the same way as best has caused a problem with thin, sharp strands, it tended to embed themselves and not come out your lungs. I've always thought that fibreglass uh, poses a risk uh, in the same way, and carbon fibre, maybe not as severe as asbestos did, but it is an ongoing thing that, you know, if you breathe in a lot of fibreglass and asbestos, then, uh, well, yes, asbestos, fibreglass and carbon fibre, uh, it could embed itself in your lungs. Because keep in mind that your lungs are the equivalent of... They're the biological equivalent of a supercapacitor. They rely on a huge surface area inside for to their effect, so to get the maximum air into your body, the oxygen. And they're sort of sponge-like, and that's why things like smoking and breathing in fine particulate stuff is a problem, because it blocks those uh, pores. In the case of the, these sharp sort of, uh, strands, they stick in, and because your lung can't expel them itself... Uh, they form a sort of they form a sort of material around them, organic material, and that's what restricts it. Basically, reduces the capacity of your lungs. It's not very nice. Uh, be aware if you work in an environment with lots of spiky glass and carbon fiber dust. Just keep in mind that possibly even a job change might be a good idea. It makes me think of when I was uh, working in construction sites, and there was so much fiberglass just just billowing around everywhere. You get labourers throwing bales of fibreglass down from up in storage areas. And it was so full of the fibreglass dust that your voice went coarse. You'd be coughing up sort of like dirt out your lungs. Not great. And uh, it also, you could see it in the air really heavily. In, in a dark site with the sunlight coming in, it looked like a laser beam coming through there through all the glitter. It looked quite nice, but not great. Uh, I've never worked out why the supposed health and safety it doesn't really do much about that paper masks are not enough but anyway i've digressed from the main subject which is this material with the carbon fibers which is an interesting approach to heating and how you're supposed to join it or terminate it the only clue and i, I searched on google i could not find anything really significant at all the only clue i could find here is this listing which shows i'm slipping some heat shrink over getting the little uh, copper ferrules or metal ferrules and sort of pushing both ends into it and presumably crimping it down before the heat shrinker, though I don't see any sign it's been shrunk down, unless they're using a conductive glue or something. I'm not really sure. It's very vague how you're supposed to terminate it. I pondered that one way you could do that is with these spikes that are sold with, you know, you get the uh, LED ribbon, the mains voltage LED tape, which is fully encapsulated in the plastic, and you push the spikes at the end into the end of the little bus bars. It made me think that you could possibly... Uh, centre up on the carbon fibre and then push it in and the elasticity of the outer sleeve will actually grip that in and hopefully it won't damage the fibres too much but I don't know how well that would work I don't know if that would be a good way of terminating it the problem is that it's not a huge current but it could cause burning over time and talking of burning let's uh, give this a wee flame test actually so here's a lighter uh, let's zoom in on this so here's a lighter. Let's uh, burn the carbon fibre. Now I'm expecting the outer thread to burn. Yep. Mm -hmm. The carbon fibre I'm not really expecting to burn too much. The flame has just dwindled. That's not very good. It's oh right. One one moment. I'll just grab another one. Let's try that again. So let's uh, hold this under the. Uh, insulation here and see if it catches fire. It's puffing up. 
It's making popping noises. There is smoke coming off it. It is lit and there is more smoke coming off it. Is it going to sustain a flame? Should I be breathing this in? It's puffed up dramatically. It's glowing red hot. Is it going to self-extinguish? It has self-extinguished. That's a good start. It's turned into a, just a crusty charcoal, which is common of self-extinguishing materials. I wonder if that is deliberately self-extinguishing then. Okay, right, that's that bit of the test done. So the other option I came up for terminating this, and they're going to have, well, actually, no, I will keep zoomed in. I'll just zoom out a little bit so that uh, there's less chance of me wandering off shot. The other op option I thought was to put a little ferrule on, but the downside of this is that uh, the ferrules that are designed for copper wires, they're going to bite in quite tightly onto that carbon. I don't know how much give there is. Of, it's just going to fracture the carbon fibre uh, core. And uh, also the outer plastic sleeve that's designed to go over the insulation of a copper wire is... Uh, so out of scale to this with the core versus the outer thickness here that if you use one that's going to f a ferrule that's going to fit over the plastic, the insulation should I say, then it's not actually going to grip onto the uh, in internal copper, uh, copper, the internal carbon fibre strands. So uh, I'm going to try and terminate this. And the, the way I've found the best way to do it is to just nibble gently to basically create a sort of fracture point around the outer insulation. And once you've done that, then burst it off like this. Perhaps just leave it with the, the snips here. And carefully pull it off, and hopefully that little spiral thread will stay put. I would say leave plenty on it, because uh, when you're actually putting this uh, ferrule over the end, this is where I suddenly wish I'd put on my... I will put on my better glasses for this. One moment. Let's put on my zoom lens glasses. They make a huge difference. Rightio, that's a... Uh, that. Let's um, thread this over here. And I'm going to deliberately push the uh, unwanted uh, the binder thread out the way. I don't really want that trapped underneath, so I'm going to push it on until the strands pop out. And this is where it would have been really nice if the red sleeve had gone over the insulation, but it won't. And then I'm going to use this. Now, this is a crimping tool that when you activate it, it's designed for ferrules. These little wedges slide against each other until they reach a certain pressure. So I'm going to slide that over. Close it, and then I'm going to squeeze it, squeeze it in until it clicks. And that has now crimped in on that, but I wonder if it's damaged the strands inside. I don't really know. I don't think you could easily take it off again to actually see. Uh, now, before I cut these strands, I'm just going to put a bit of tape. I've got a bit of, bit of tape over these because otherwise the strands will get everywhere and I cut them. And uh, the strands are so fine that they will pierce your skin. There, it's pretty unpleasant working with carbon fibre. It's not so glamorous. So let's, uh, now I've put them in tape, let's uh, just close up with the snips and just nip that off flush. And that is at least a termination. Not sure how good a termination, termination it is. Right, okay, let's zoom back out. Let's connect this to the mains. Let's actually measure the resistance first. Um, right, meter. There's a meter. So this is supposedly 20 meters. 20 meters times... 20 meters times, they say roughly about 33 ohms a meter, was it? Is about 660 ohms we're expecting. Let's put the meter across. I'll hold it on with the finger on one end, but not the other. Um, it's showing about 800, 858. I wonder if it varies with temperature. We can measure that again after I've heated it up. Right, OK. And we'll also be able to see if it changes once we actually power it up. I shall use the hoppy for this because despite the fact it's got a flickery display, it's quite convenient for just stuffing these wires down the end of its connector. So let's get the hoppy meter up. And I shall put these wires in 
I'll just wipe the dust off it, put these wires into these terminals. I'd also be cautious about flexing it too much because uh, carbon fibre is quite brittle when flexed too far. It does flake off into tiny little strands. So here's the material. Let's uh, plug it in. And the meter is showing roughly 90 watts. 365 milliamps at 246 volts. And that stuff, I'm cautious about touching it here. I'm cautious about the fact, you know, during manufacture, what if one, just one of these tiny little fibres just stuck through the side of the insulation? I'm guessing it has been tested, but you just never know what you're getting off eBay, really. Um, all it takes is one little strand coming out to actually provide quite a conductive path that would make short work of humans who are quite sensitive to electricity. So it's warming up. Uh, time to bring in the thermal meter, actually thermal imaging camera, and take a look at this. So let's uh, power that up and let it boot up. The purpose this is sold for it, as, as far as I can see, you get the other stuff, the self-regulating wires, and you also get the ones that have a sort of like a conductive core and then an outer, I'm guessing, conductive layer. And the purpose that, that this is shown as is the type that you lay down a floor with uh, multiple layers, including insulating layers, and then you zigzag this, zigzag, zigzag this backwards and forwards in sort of plastic uh, strips, and then you screed it in so it is fully embedded in the screed, which is where, if there was any strands sticking out, you wouldn't want uh, earth leakage type issues. But uh, once it's in, there's no real movement. It's, it should be locked solid, and it basically provides underfloor heating. The whole advantage of underfloor heating is because the heat is originating from the lowest level, you don't end up in that situation that even if you heat your house quite toasty hot, you could end up with a very fine layer at foot level, which is ice cold. If you're in a house that's heated but you're feeling your feet are cold, just put your hand down the floor for a moment and feel if you can feel that layer of cold that sits at the ground level. So this certainly is heating up now. Let's bring one strand out so we can see what it is relative to ambient. The thermal imaging camera is now ready, so I'm going to focus on to the thermal imaging camera. Let's uh, turn the light off here for lack of distraction, and then we'll just focus onto here. Is it focused? I think it is. So, the cable itself, the ambient temperature is about, it's about 9 degrees Celsius in here. The tape has risen to about 20 degrees above ambient. 20 degrees above ambient and the bulk of it, because it's all grouped together, that is getting pretty hot inside because um, where you've got lots of cable rolled up together, it will the heat will increase. This is why you should never, ever really... Uh, I'll turn the light back on again here. So uh, for reference, yep, 20 degrees above ambient um, and then... Uh, the rest of it's getting pretty damn hot inside, 70 degrees Celsius. So the reason it's getting hot, uh, I shall just... Um, oh, you know what I didn't do there? I didn't take exposure off. That meant that display was quite dark, but it was still visible. The way it's all gripped here means the heat builds up. It's trapped. There's no airflow between the cores. And this is why you should never really leave cable on reels. If you leave cable on a reel and it's quite a high load, then the cable itself in the middle of the cable is going to get very, very hot and it can start melting the insulation. Uh, a good example of that would be when in the early days of working with rope light and uh, when we we're doing Christmas lights in a cold warehouse, we occasionally used to just plug the drum in very briefly just to warm it up. And one day someone forgot the drum was plugged in and literally all the plastic in the drum just melted together because of the heat from that. This is quite nicely hot. I'm also being cautious about not touching it with two hands just in case. Just in case I get unlucky. I don't think... I think they would have tested this. They would have run it between... Uh, they do mention a 3,000 volt test, which uh, I'm guessing they run it between a couple of rollers or a guide and then just test from the central core to uh, that to see if there is any breakdown of a uh, flashover. But again, this came from eBay. You'd, it might be rejects. Who knows? So the temperature is fairly stable. 90 degrees. Let's uh, unplug this and let's measure that resistance again. Oh, you know what? Did I... Did I actually do that. I actually left it in diode setting. Clive, you're a plum. So we were looking for 600-ish ohms. I left that in the wrong setting there. I didn't change that setting. You're probably all shouting, Clive, 
you got it wrong. 660 ohms, and to be honest, the power rating didn't change, so it seems to be very stable, that resistance. So 660 ohms, yeah. And that was about, oh, I forgot what it was. I'm not doing very well, am I? I'm going to have to plug this back in again just to check that. Let's work out what power it was per meter on 240 volts. Keep in mind that you'd have to use a shorter length for 120 volts. So the power is uh, 370 milliamps. It's about 91 watts divided by the 20 meters. It's going to be roughly, is that about 5 watts a meter roughly? 91 watts divided by the 20 meters equals... Yeah, four and a half watts a meter to four and a half to five watts a meter. So, you know, that actually does give off a modest amount of heat. It's not dramatic. It's not burning hot. But, um, yeah, I'm trying to think of other uses for it. Look at the perfect power factor. That's because this is purely a resistive load. So it's a unity power factor. It's a power factor of one. Annual power consumption of this would be 267 units of electricity if you left it on all the time, which would equate roughly, I'm guessing, to about 90 pounds a year if this was run 24-7. I'm not sure what area this would heat. Um, 20 metres. By the time you was exact backwards and forwards, that would be that would heat up quite quickly. But you wouldn't have the heating on all the time. So yes, it's an interesting material. I don't know what the official way of terminating it is. There's not really much information on the internet regarding that that I could find. Maybe you guys know of, a, of another site that does show it being terminated properly. Well, one other thing that came to mind was the little offcuts like this would be perfect as ionizer emitters if you actually just pushed over the needle of a negative ion generator with the strands out like this the very fine number of tips would result in very good uh, ionization of the air because of the potential difference being the greatest at the curvature the uh, what is it electron density being greatest at the curvature it's, it's just more likely to actually impart the ions the charge onto the air and uh, create cheer charged air molecules so it's kind of interesting I'm not sure then. Crimps could damage it. Pushing it in might work, but I wonder if that would just, uh, the thermal expansion contraction over time would cause any issues. Tricky. But it's an interesting material, and of course, because you've got a specific resistance per meter, uh, let's see, what would that dissipate then per on 12 volts? If you used one meter on 12 volts, that would be 33 ohms. So 12 uh, divided by those 33 ohms would give a current of approximately 360 milliamps times uh, the 12 volts would actually give a dissipation of about 4 watts a meter. So 1 meter on 12 volts, yeah, of course, that is, that is exactly, uh, because this is 20 meters across 240, which is the equivalent of 1 meter across 12 volts. So a meter of this would actually be the equivalent heating output on a 12 volt supply. So it could have uses for applications that you just need that tiny little bit of heat, just a few watts in a very small area. You could even wrap it round things and then connect it to a 12 volt supply. In a way, the 12 volt supply just sounds like it'd be a, a bit safer, but yeah, it's an interesting material. Lots of interesting materials available on eBay.